Growing up in San Francisco, um, I was really athletic. Grew up doing karate, baseball, basketball, football, and skateboarding. Before I really like hit my teens, I think kind of the brands that really kind of defined me were like Nike and Jordan, right? Those were my heroes at the time. Again, being an athlete, I was always kind of, you know, in Nike and, and, and Jordan. And so eventually, Getting older, going into you know middle school, high school, I remember wearing brands like Tommy Hilfiger and like FUBU, you know Eddie Bauer, North Face had the Jan Sport backpack with you know customizing the backpacks like that era. So I really believe that you know before I was really into like or I even had discovered what streetwear is you know how it is today. It was really kind of like looking at like Tommy Hilfiger and and like FUBU, like those were my brands. Graphics, you know, numbers. Again, those brands were also, I think, kind of really inspired by sports. You look at a lot of like the FUBU jerseys, like the football jerseys and, you know, Tommy Hilfiger looking at like, you know, um, all types of like American sports. And, you know, Polo Ralph Lauren looking at Polo, you know? And so a lot of these brands were inspired by sports. The very first store I actually, you know, got a job at was on Haight Street in San Francisco. And Haight Street was like downtown New York of San Francisco. We had Stussy, there was another store called Red Five, which was like Colette. Paris. There was True, which was our sneaker shop. There was FTC, which was our skateboard location. Like that, that was our door, FTC for San Francisco. So it was that whole little neighborhood. That's where I was working. We were all these kids working retail, super, you know, obsessed with style. I grew up skateboarding, as I mentioned earlier. And so, you know, just skate style was just my thing. Skaters were kind of becoming my hero. It kind of went from like Michael Jordan to like Stevie Williams, Kareem Campbell, and like looking at, you know, African-American skaters because at the time it was predominantly white. And so I was like, these are guys, these are my heroes. I want to dress like them. I want to skate like them. And so that was my life. That was my world. It was skateboarding. And, you know, within that whole world, you know, the fashion looked like screen printed t-shirts and hoodies. You know, that's really what it was. It was like Stussy. It was Massimo, Billabong. But then, you know, mixing in again some of that Nike, you know, some of that Jordan and kind of mixing all of these different kind of worlds that raised me. That is kind of how I would define kind of like streetwear back when I was in San Francisco. You know, and then, you know, hip hop was also a huge influence of mine. And I was obsessed with New York City at the time. So I was obsessed with like from films, you know, music, Cameron, Dipset, 50 Cent. This was like Who Kid era of like mixtapes, you know, when you would have like 30 songs on a tape and every song was just like one minute long. And so looking at like Dipset and like Cameron inspired me to start wearing pink and like yay was like wearing polo and like so like all of these kind of influences from like sport and skateboarding and then like hip-hop and like New York really kind of influence I think you know how I define myself um, through through fashion. When I first moved to New York 2004 super curious kid just wanted to kind of soak up all of what New York had to offer didn't really know much about the city from what I had seen on movies so I was just going out a lot and absorbing culture and Obviously, New York Fashion Week, I didn't have that in San Francisco, so I was like, wow, Fashion Week, what is that? Sneaking into shows, I think one of the first shows I snuck into was like a Y3 show. Like, all my friends were there. I remember this is when like Lupe Fiasco had that song, like Kick Push Out, and he was at the show, like sitting right behind me. So he kind of to see like this face kind of changing within, within fashion based off of who was going to the shows that I noticed in New York City. Um, and then you would see brands like Agnes B, doing collaborations with like a New York thing or like with A-Life, you know? So she was kind of like one of the first brands I noticed re like kind of working with brands at that street level, at such a high level that she was at. Like that was where one of the very first like luxury street kind of relationships that I recognized when I moved to New York City with Agnes B. Then I would sneak into like the Steven Sprouse, Louis Vuitton park and see a bunch of cool people there. So I started to see a lot of crossovers at, you know, early when I moved to New York City. Downtown, like that Louis Vuitton party was downtown on the Bowery. That was kind of like my experience of kind of like observing luxury at the street level. But then, you know, to Don C's point, I was been really thinking about like how we got, how we got there. You know, they were traveling to Paris and they were kind of one of the only groups of guys that looked how they looked in Paris at that time. And I feel like they saw a gap. They're like, hey, there's 
just we're just the only guys out here that look like this wait a minute there can be more like there can be a bigger conversation happening out here like we like this stuff we like louis vuitton we like all of these brands that come from paris that come from europe you know this these houses we love this stuff but we don't really see many people wearing it like us we don't see many people going to the shows that look like us and we're like swagged out you know like we're we're fresh we look cool so i feel like at those moments you know virgil was a part of that you know those moments i feel like they had vision was was being born like wait a minute like we got to add our flavor we got to put this on the runways of paris you know it's kind of i feel like how fat or how streetwear you know made it to this kind of luxury luxury level so i feel like it came from traveling and came from like sticking noses in where we weren't really invited to be a part of. Investigating was this whole investigative culture, right? Like inspired by fashion, inspired by taste, high taste, wanting to be a part of that. And that really now has opened up the doors, opened up the lanes, right? Like we're showing in Paris now and Virgil's at Louis Vuitton now. And so it really came from just investigating and then hanging out you know, and mingling, you know, adopting ideas and, and, you know, the designers dressing like the street kids and the street kids dressing like the designers. And so there was a lot of kind of like remixing kind of happening with brands. I remember actually skateboarding in some super expensive Tommy Hilfiger pants because Chad Muska was skating in super expensive Chad Muska pants. I went to Macy's and bought them off the rack. <laughs> The first trick I did, I, I landed wrong and I ripped them. They were like nylon and I ripped them. And I was like, no, I had spent like all of my piggy bank to get these Tommy, just to, just to look fresh. You know, it, was, it goes back to style. Skateboarding and things that may have been a little shocking or daring at the time. Like, wait a minute, you're not supposed to skateboard in that. That's a little too expensive. You know, and so I feel like with Chad Musk, it was coming from like, I'm so good. I'll never like fall. Like, like it was like almost a shock. So, you know, kind of playing with almost like shock culture, like you're wearing that, doing that, you're wearing this here in this city during fashion week, what? Like I've never like, so it's really kind of like looking outside of the boundaries and kind of, you know, breaking the rules, remixing the rules, rewriting the rules. And, you know, inspiration comes from anywhere from, you know, a taxi driver to, you know, someone who's working in a restaurant, someone on the street, walking their dog, whoever, it can come from anywhere. So I'm always constantly taking photos. So I'm looking at that. Um, and then again, looking back and kind of what I have already created, kind of starting at the Department of Sanitation um, collaboration is when I think I really kind of put my stake in the ground for Hair and Preston as like a fashion, brand because right after that I went into launching the full collection in January of 2017 and the Department of Sanitation collaboration was like in September of 2016. So like that's kind of when I very first started to kind of craft this kind of like DNA of Heron Preston which is workwear. You know I was working with sanitation workers and taking their old uniforms and upcycling those and remixing those and editing those. And that was all about sustainability as well and the environment. So that kind of sticks with me every collection. It's like workwear and like sustainability. But then like kind of remixing those stories every season, looking at uniforms, but then also kind of defining like what is workwear? You know, and that's kind of how I landed in the NASA uh, collaboration, I was looking at uniforms again, you know, uniforms and workwear go hand in hand. And so, you know, looking at kind of worlds outside of my world and kind of adopting that and storytelling around that is, I think, how I kind of approach crafting these stories.